I was on a windjammer. Do you believe it? <laughs> a windjammer, and we stopped in Monhegan. And we did, we did paint on location. At age 95, Ruth Gellis can look at one of her many scenic watercolor paintings and know exactly where she was when she painted it. This is also a fantasy, dining in the olden days. We sat down with Ruth at Wheelock Terrace in Hanover, where she now lives. Surrounded by her artwork, Ruth's paintings are filled with bright colors and light. And that's Brooklyn. That's Coney Island, yeah. You know that? Yeah a stark contrast to the dark memories of her childhood. She was born in Essen, Germany, and until age 11, had a wonderful life. My father was a businessman. My mother attended to our home, and uh, we had a steady maid also. She had been with us many years. Until Adolf Hitler rose to power in 1933. He said he's gonna get rid of the Jewish people. And soon after, there were signs in stores and establishments, Jews are not wanted, Jews are not accepted here. Sensing the anti-Jewish sentiment would only grow, Ruth's father, Joel, decided to take the family to South Africa. They left family and belongings behind. There was a lot of the family and friends at the, at the trade station to wish us goodbye and wish us well. A lot of people came. Ruth and her parents were in South Africa when Nazi troops invaded Poland, triggering World War II. But it was only much later that Ruth and her family learned what happened to loved ones back home. My family disappeared only later on we found out that there was nobody left. Nobody left anymore because they probably didn't know how to leave, where to go. Not everybody was able to do that. Though they were safe in Johannesburg, Ruth's father decided to bring his family back to Europe, to Paris, where his brother lived. At the time, France was not occupied, but in 1940, German troops advanced into France and French police began rounding up Jews. They started to arrest people and they arrested my father. They didn't take women and children under 16 but they took my father. My father made the biggest mistake in his life. The biggest mistake is that he moved us from South Africa to Europe. He should never have done that. We were safe in the South Africa. To escape arrest, Ruth's father joined the French Foreign Legion. Ruth and her mother were shuttled to the south of France, where Jewish refugees lived in fear, not knowing when they might be arrested. Ruth recalls the day she tried to attend school in this small village. I go to register in a little schoolhouse. No sooner was I sitting in the class, in came the mayor of this little place, this Frenchman, and I can just see him with his mustache there. And he pointed to me and he said, Toi juif, dehors, you Jew out. Can you imagine? How I felt, I was thrown out. No sooner was I in the class, I was thrown out of school. Ruth's father was discharged from the French military and the family was reunited. But Ruth recalls the frightening day when police came to get them and others and ordered them to board a train. A file of people there were a lot of refugees in this village and we all marching to the train station and we boarding this train. The train left starts going and it comes to a halt. No, no sooner after, maybe 15 minutes later at another stop and my father says we're getting off and I'm saying to this day my heart is pounding. He says to my mother, who was diabetic, she was not well, we're getting off. And we got off this train, the train left, 
and there was a gendarme, a policeman walking up and down with a gun, and he didn't see us. We got off the train, the train left. This train was destined to Auschwitz. The father spent the remainder of the war in France. When the war ended, Ruth met a young American medical student studying in Paris. It was an introduction initiated by her father. Was your father a good matchmaker then? My father never made a date for me in my whole life. I met my future husband. We dated. We got married in Paris. They moved to his hometown of New York City, where Ruth got the education and art classes she had yearned for as a child. And now I have a house, a husband, children, a dog, and I am going to college. I really enjoyed painting. It was like a heavenly light. It was good for me that I finally uh, achieved something. Ruth's work was shown in galleries across New York City. The paintings reflect her travels of happier times. When the war ended and her life began anew, now she wants younger generations to know and understand what happened during World War II. It's important that people should know about how people did live through the Holocaust. A young girl like I was, I had no future. Nothing was really going to be happening to me. And I had no hope. I had resentments at that time. Now it's different. I know that I can Remember. And you survived. And I can't forget. And I survived. That was really unbelievable. The, all the things that we had gone through. All these different places that I had to live in. And this is maybe, I am strong nowadays at 95. I'm pretty strong. And we think pretty remarkable as well. Ruth even taught herself the harmonica and delighted us with a quick concert. Ah! 